In Columbia, South Carolina, we have with us a South Carolina Regional Director, Mahesh Mike Patel. Uh, Mahesh, tell us first of all the agenda for today's regional. We have an agenda for today as a regional. We have a great speaker are uh, coming to speak in our event. Hold on. You go to, oh, wait, sorry, you look over there. I'm sorry. Okay, don't okay. look down, don't okay, look at me, it. look over okay. there. Okay. At the Ahoa South Carolina Regional in Columbia, South Carolina, we have with us Mahesh Mike Patel is the regional director here. Uh, Mahesh, tell us first of all the agenda for today. I hear you have a lot of politicians coming to grace this event. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have good many speakers coming today as uh, Governor Nikki Haley. We have uh, Mick Malwani are coming tonight. We have a Team Scott office, you know, secretary or some coming in tonight. Also, we have city council uh, people are coming tonight. Also, we have a Columbia mayor are also coming too. Also, so we have a very great lineup of speaker tonight to speak in the event. And also, we have a great turnout at the South Carolina Regional, and we have a good educational classes being held in Columbia too. Also, um, I tell us uh, the. Um the governor, uh, what brings her to Ahoa? Uh, governor Nikki Haley, uh, she's a friend of the Ahoa for a long, long time. And she support Ahoa and Ahoa support her always too. And she here locally, so she will be at come out and speak and address the issue we have currently. So she's going to discuss with the connected member directly. That's the reason she would like to come to speak in Ahoa. Uh, tell us also your membership here, uh, any any um, new town halls, any other uh, meetings that you're going to hold for them? Yes, ma'am. We have new town hall meetings sometime next month in the Greenville, Anderson area. And in November, we have a town hall meeting going to be held in the Rock Hill area. And December, first week of December in the uh, uh, Walterboro or Haldeville area, we're going to be have planning to town hall meeting. Very good. So you're covering the whole of South Carolina. Also, any uh, CHO classes? Yes, ma'am. We have a CHO classes in uh, February next year in Walterboro, South Carolina. And uh, this is the first time we have been doing in the CHO classes in a low country area, actually. So we hope it's going to be good turnout in the CHO classes, and then everybody's going to take advantage on the CHO classes. Great information. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I can be don't show the crowd, that's the, the whole
If you can keep a, keep a, keep a tight frame, that's good. You, know. you want the group in the shot, the entire shot? The thing is, he'll be looking here that way. And everybody no, here. he'll be looking at the camera. At the camera. Oh. I'm not in the picture. Go, go, go tight. Oh, wow. Go closer to him. Go closer to her. Yeah. No, as long as. This, I don't want we're going, go ahead, we're rolling. Yeah. We have this, the ambassadors of South Carolina with the director here. Uh, we have Vishal Patel who's going to be speaking to us. Vishal, first of all, tell us a little bit about uh, the role of the ambassador here and how you're helping your director. Um, really, our role as an ambassador is really just to kind of help uh, with membership enrollment, which is our number one focus in the state of South Carolina. Um, just today we've actually reached our 300 mark for the number of enrollment in the state uh, and really just uh, helping kind of promote what AHOA stands for, what we're working on as an organization and really just to assist uh, Mahesh, our regional director, in any way he's, he feels necessary. And tell us a little bit, I know ambassadors play a huge role in collecting PAC funds, so what's the goal today for PAC? Well, each region has a uh, initial goal this year for thirteen thousand dollars, and uh, we're hoping to get to thirteen today. Uh, that's an ambitious goal, but uh, we hope to reach it. If not today, then hopefully by the year's end. And that uh, also uh, does not include uh, Nikki Haley, governor, is coming having a fundraiser for her. Yeah. Uh, your membership happy to do that as well as the pack? Yeah, we're, we're going to try to uh, really empty out everyone's pockets today by between Nikki Haley and uh, the Political Action Fund. Um, it's really important that everyone gives back to uh, AHOA and our obviously government officials like Nikki Haley, who does such a tremendous job for us. Well said. Thank you so much. Yeah. with us in Columbia, South Carolina, the governor of South Carolina, Governor Nikki Haley. Thank you for joining us. Um, I would like to ask, so this is a hotelier school. You're pro-business. You've done so much for South Carolina. Uh, can you tell us how important the hospitality industry is for South Carolina? You know, I came and spoke to this industry before I was governor, and it's because I grew up in a small business. I know what they go through. And so, one, it was to tell them thank you. Two, it was to let them know how great the South Carolina economy is. And three, that we're going to keep fighting for them. South Carolina 
Carolina is good for business, so it's good for hoteliers. This is an amazing group of business people that do such a great job and want to continue to work hard for them. Hospitality is number two industry here, is that right? We, tourism is number two, but South Carolina was named the friendliest state in the country. Charleston was named the number one travel destination in the country the last three years in a row. Greenville named one of the top five best places to retire. Tourism is really, really big right now in South Carolina. We're going to continue to strengthen that. And saying, uh, saying that, uh, what incentives can you give to hoteliers from out of state to come here? Uh, we were in North Carolina a couple of days ago, and a lot of hoteliers saying South Carolina is the place to invest. Is that right? South Carolina is the place to invest, and the reason is government doesn't get in their way. We don't tax. We've lowered the taxes on small businesses from 5% to 3%. We make sure all of our government directors understand if you're costing a business time, you're costing them money, and that's unacceptable. We make sure that we're customer service friendly, and we continue to work for our small businesses every day, whether it's our big corporations using them um, within their economy or whether it's just making sure we continue to recruit new conferences to the area. We'll do that across the state of South Carolina. Our hoteliers are doing extremely well, but we're just getting started. Well said. And today is 9-11. Your thoughts, your sentiments on, our, on this day? You know, it's hard to think about 9-11 and not think about where you were. 13 years ago, I had just had um, my son and was thinking, what has just happened? But what we looked at was Americans are survivors. We saw first responders really step up in a way that was admirable. We saw citizens help strangers they didn't know. We saw the country show that we're survivors and we're going to fight to keep the American spirit. We're going to fight to keep that business and freedoms that we've always had. And so today's a special day to remember not only the tragedy that happened, but how we've overcome that and how we're going to continue to fight for that spirit. Very good. And one last thing to wish all the viewers of TV Asia happy holidays. Okay. And we wish all the viewers of TV Asia happy holidays. This is Governor Nikki Haley, and we wish all the viewers of TV Asia happy holidays. Thank you. We really need to get going. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Please, please. Thank you. That we will always support you if you are here today, and support as a South Carolina. This is also focused on our annual convention 2015 in the Long Beach, California, from April 22nd to 25th in the Long Beach, California Entertainment Center. We are current from my perspective, and it's going to continue to get better. One word is unity. It's people with ownership than what's represented here in the membership, so how It's crucial for women to come and join the association because it sets an example for future generations, for future women, for their own children, and we need more representation. And Governor Nikki Haley to be here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce Chief Roger, our Vice President, Government and Affairs. Chief Rogers. Thank you, Mahesh. We have the opportunity, uh, some of us do, to travel the country. And, and during these times, gosh, I've been on 40 some odd trips this year alone, we have met countless elected officials, and many of them are great public servants. And we have made a lot of friends. But it is always nice to come to a state where you bless that you have her. In fact, as I'm about to read her resume, the only blemish that I could find is myself being a proud graduate of Georgia Tech, is that she graduated from Clemson University, <laughs> which I heard has a football team. Um, but she made up for it in so many other ways. Uh, she worked as an accounting supervisor for a private company and five of its subsidiaries. She then returned to the family business and helped oversee its growth into a multi-million dollar operation. From the start of her administration, ever given a warm a welcome, let's give one to Governor Nikki Haley. Thank you very much, and it is a great day in South Carolina. You know, I will tell you, um, as I told some of you in there, I am the proud daughter of Indian parents that reminded us every day how blessed we were to live in this country.
They loved the fact that only in this country could you be anything you wanted to be and nothing would get in your way. So it's frustrating for me when I pass the TV and I see them say, we've lost the American dream. What happened to the American dream? How do we get it back? It's on the radio. It's on the TV. Everyone's talking about it. But I know that when I talk to my parents, they know they made the right decision to come to this country. They know that their children are going to be more successful than they were. But look at where we were in South Carolina. And you tell me if the American dream is real or not in this state. Three and a half years ago in 2011, we had all come off of a terrible recession. Unemployment had hit 11.1%. Banks weren't lending. Credit lines were being pulled. A lot of people were out of work. And what we knew was if we could find a person a job, we could take care of a family. And we had a lot of families to take care of. So the first thing we did was we said South Carolina needs to get into the customer service business. So we hunkered down every agency director we hired. We made sure that they understood time was money. And if they were costing a person or a business time, they were costing them money, and that was unacceptable in the state of South Carolina. We went a step further, and we saw that we were the only state in the Southeast that didn't cap damages on lawsuits. So we passed tort reform, brought our state back up with every other state in the Southeast so that we could be competitive to bring companies back to South Carolina. We looked at our permitting board where everything had gone to die. It was political. It was bureaucratic. We replaced everybody off the board. We put all business people on that board, and the chairman of that board is the president of a construction company. He understands time is money. And then we went to the public servants in South Carolina, and we had them all start answering the phones. It's a great day in South Carolina. How may I help you? They hated that. They really did. But the important part of that was we wanted them to be proud of where they lived. But more importantly, we wanted to remind them who it was they worked for. Answer the question on the other side of the line. Solve that person's problem. So as we did that, then we knew, and I knew, growing up in a small rural town of Bamberg, that if we were going to lift up South Carolina, we had to lift up all of South Carolina, even the rural parts. So we went to the Department of Commerce and we told our project managers, right now, you get paid for bonuses for every company you bring to the state. Now we're going to pay you a bigger bonus if you bring a company to a rural area than if you bring it to an urban area. And then we started to sell South Carolina. And now I will tell you that 11.1% unemployment rate that we had is now 5.7% today. We now have more people working in South Carolina than ever in the history of the state. We build, thank you, we do. We build planes with Boeing. We are the number one BMW producing plant in the world now. We're the number one tire producing state in the country with Bridgestone, Michelin, Continental, and now GT Tire. Carbon fiber, it's the next big thing, and we got it. We took the largest carbon fiber producer in the world, Tory Industries from Japan, is now calling South Carolina home. And the list goes on and on. But we didn't just do this in the big areas. Look at some of the other things we did. We took a company, we're the first flat screen TV manufacturer, 500 jobs in the small town of Williamsburg, South Carolina. Colgate Palmolive, 300 jobs in Greenwood, South Carolina. If any of you know about Allendale, Lewis Hornick Textiles, 175 jobs in Allendale. And just recently, in the small town of Chester, GT Tire, 1,700 jobs. So all of our rural areas, 57,000 jobs in 45 out of 46 counties. Every town is seeing what it feels like. And we now have the fastest growing economy on the East Coast. They are now referring to us as the beast of the Southeast, and we will take that. But what we also know is there is an opportunity. While we are making sure that we're doing that, we're also making sure that we're taking on the challenges of D.C. And we know that D.C. throws a lot of things at us. But how do we turn a problem into an opportunity? And we saw that. The state had gotten very negative on welfare. Why am I paying for that person on the couch? Why aren't they doing something about it? Why can't you get them to work? So we tested it. Before, when somebody came into the welfare office, DC would say, check the boxes and hand them a check. Now when somebody comes into a South Carolina welfare office, we check the boxes and we say, what do you do? What are you good at? What's your skill set? We take the information they've given us, we match it up with businesses, and to date we have taken almost 25,000 people off of welfare and put them into a job. 
This is about getting as many people working as we can. We also make sure that our companies understand that if they're going to come into South Carolina, they have to make me two promises. They have to hire our South Carolinians, and they have to use our South Carolina small businesses. So they do that. Boeing, for example, 91% of their contracts all with South Carolina businesses. Continental Tire, they just let me know $100 million of their contracts have already gone to South Carolina businesses. And we encourage them to know that's what it means to take on the industry. That's what it means to make the economy flow. And then there's tourism. You look at Charleston, and it was named the number one tourist de destination in the world a couple of years ago, number one tourist destination in the country for the last three years in a row. Greenville was named one of the top five best places to retire. South Carolina was named the most patriotic state and the friendliest state in the country. And what we are doing is saying, if we have manufacturing, how do we blend that with the opportunity that's tourism? We're putting both together. So now business conferences, we're encouraging them to come to South Carolina. We're encouraging them to have their leadership retreats here. Once we get them to vacation here, then they want to come back and bring a company here. Then they want a second home here. And so our goal is to make sure that we continue to do that. So you will see we've got a few things going. We've got Undiscovered South Carolina, which is a new tourism program that we're doing through all the rural parts of South Carolina so that people can really see those smaller towns of what we're trying to show. We also are doing a barbecue trail so that we can get them throughout all the other parts of South Carolina. Anything that we can be creative on, we are doing that. You're going to see us redo our welcome center so that it now matches the new personality and the new excitement that we have in the state. We will continue to work hard to make this economy go, but the beautiful part of this is no one can say that the American dream is not real in South Carolina because every person feels what the economy feels like. Everybody is, they're seeing jobs, they're seeing business start to flourish, and the best part is we're just getting started. So I want all of you to know that if you have visited and are here in South Carolina from another state, we welcome you. We want you to vacation here. We want you to put a hotel here. We've got lots of business that can be done here. For those of you that are already here in South Carolina, know that I know you went through a rough time but now we're in the good time. We're going to hunker down and we're going to keep make sure that it only gets better. Thank you very much for having me. God bless you. Now, we do have a very special award for the governor. Before I give her that, though, she didn't mention it, but there is a little election coming up in November. And it would be one of the worst days in the history of South Carolina if on November the 5th you woke up and she was not governor. So everybody in this room, make sure that November 5th is a celebration of Nikki Haley being reelected. And with that, we'd like to present her with our highest award from AHOA, and that is the Friend of the Hotelier Award for all that she does on behalf of everyone in this room. Let's give one more warm welcome and thank you to Governor Haley. some other dignitaries